Okay, there's one last concept and, um, yeah, that we need to know about, which is something called average product. So, so far we talked about marginal product, which shows, you know, you employ me, how much extra do I add? And total, which is, we take all of the people that you've so far employed, how much in total have they made? And we, we, saw, we saw that the relationship was fairly simple. Yeah, we simply said, well, look, yeah, if the first worker adds an extra 10, then the total yeah, would be 10. If the second one adds another 15, the total is 25 and so on. But what would be also useful to know is, on average, how much have your workers produced? Yeah, um, let's suppose the, foot, you know, the third one adds another 20, then the total is 45. So my labor is one, two, three. But, you know, so although it's useful to know the third one has added 20, it's also going to be helpful to know when I employ three workers, on average, how much have they produced? So that's the concept of what's called average product, yeah, which is, or you could call it, um, output per worker. Yeah, so which you'll come across before as productivity. So if when I have one worker, my total is 10, my average is, of course, 10, because that's 10 divided by 1. If when I employ two workers, I have a total of 25, then my average is now going to be 12 and a half because two workers together produce 25. So on average, they've made 12 and a half each because the first one added 10, the second one added 15. The average of that is 12 and a half. When I have three workers, we can see that the total is 45. There's three workers. So the average is 15 because 45 divided by three yeah, is 15. And that's kind of going to be a useful thing to know, isn't it? Yeah, which is, as a business, what is my average productivity? On average, how much does a worker give me? That's going to be helpful when setting prices, as we'll see later. So, again, that's the idea. So, how did we do that? We said that my average product yeah, is simply equal to my total product divided by the number of workers. Yeah, um, or the quantity of labour. Yeah, so we said, if so imagine I have... Um, imagine I have 20 workers, their total product um, is 500. Then my average product, yeah, it's nothing to do with this, yeah, I'm just making these numbers up. Then my average product yeah, is 500 divided by 20, which is going to be 25 units per worker. So what does that look like? Yeah, what does that look like on a graph? Yeah, um, um, yeah, I, I, <laughs> What other thrills? What other thrills can I can I bring to you? Um, so we know that we know that the total, yeah, um, is the marginal product added up, and we know that average is total divided by the number of workers. So therefore, we can also say that the average is the margin is all of the marginal. Sorry about that. Yeah, um, all, all of the marginals added up. All the marginals added divided by the number of workers. That sounds more complicated than it is. I'll show you now. But um, here's my marginal product curve. Initially, I have increasing returns to the variable factor, then diminishing and so on. Yeah, um, here we have stuff or output and so on. So... What's the relationship between the margin and the average? Um, if I, yeah, if I produce, if I produce, have one worker, and that first worker adds ten, well, guess what? Yeah, then my average, of course, is going to be ten, because ten divided by one um, is ten. When I add a second worker, when I add worker number two. Let's suppose that looks like about 14. Well, my average is now going to be 10 plus 14 is a total of 24 divided by 2 is going to be 12. So that's going to be there. Yeah, that number, yeah, we said, um, is going to be 10 plus 14 divided by 2. 24 divided by 2, which is 12. When I add... A third worker, let's imagine that's the third one, and let's suppose they add another 15. Yeah, um, then my total at this point, my total is 10 plus 14 plus 15 is 39. Yeah, um, I have three workers. Yeah, so my average is now 
13. The interesting question is what happens next yeah, um, when I employ a fourth worker. And let's suppose my fourth worker adds another 14. My average so far is 30. The next worker adds another 40. What's going to happen is that even though they're producing less than the one before, the average is going to go up. And the reason is that the next one is greater than the current average. Yeah, so as, as long as the marginal is above the average, the average will go up. Imagine, yeah, imagine you play netball, yeah, um, and on average you score personally 15 points a game. That's all your games up to this point. And in the next game you score 70, your average is going to go up to, say, 15.2 or something. Suppose in the game after you only score 5, then your average is going to go down. So when we're looking at the relationship between a marginal and an average, we look at the next one and we say, is it higher or lower than the current average? There, that marginal is above the current average, therefore the average is going to rise. And we can, do, we can see the maths behind that. Yeah, because we said that the next one is adding another 14. Yeah, 39 plus 14 is 53. Yeah, 53 divided by 4 yeah, um, is going to be 13.25. Yeah, 13.25 um, 13 yeah, is more than the 13 yeah, that we had there. Like we said with our netball example, as soon as, however, the fifth worker... When we employ when we employ this fifth worker, yeah, they're adding less than well, quite a lot less. That's only plus six, yeah, plus eight of them. Yeah, they're adding far less than the current average. Yeah, so the current average is thirteen point two five. The next worker adds less than the average. Therefore, the average starts to come down, and will continue to fall like that. So it's kind of obvious, yeah, which is as long as the marginal is above the average, then the average goes up. But the interesting zone, the zone that people always get wrong, is this zone here, yeah, where the marginal is falling, yeah, but it's still above the average. In that zone, the average continues to rise. And again, just so, you know, just again, if I give you a different example, just so you can see, you know, kind of how that's going to be. Yeah, um, yeah, imagine that, yeah, imagine that what has happened, yeah, is you'd scored, yeah, you'd scored, I don't know, um, again, let's take the netball example. Yeah, in, this, in your first three games, you score 10, 10, and 10. Obviously, your average is 10. In your next game, yeah, um, you score 15. Your average is going to go up. In the game after that, you score 14. The marginal has come down from 15 to 14, but it's still well above your long-run average. On average, you tend to score about 10. So even though in the next game, 14 is less than 15, 14 is still well above your long-run average. And therefore, the average continues to rise. So, just again, in summary, yeah, what does that look like? Yeah, um, we're saying that, and I'll, I'll make a kind of, I'll make a kind of extreme version of this, just so it's really clear. Yeah, Im imagine the marginal looks like that. For the first worker, the marginal and the average are the same. As long as the marginal is above the current average, so we look at the next one, it's above the average. Look at the next one, it's above the average. Look at the next one, it's above the average. Look at the next one, it's above the average. As long as the marginal is above the average, then the average goes up. As soon as for the next worker, the marginal goes below the average, then the average goes down. And what that means yeah, is that the marginal product goes through, that's the highest point, or the maximum point, the highest point, or the maximum point of average product. And that was, again, stuff. And that's the relationship between the two. You can see that from here. So what we're saying is that if we mark that there as Q1, we can say that for all those workers, the marginal is above the average. Therefore, the average goes up even though here the marginal is falling, whereas after Q1 the marginal is below the average, therefore the average goes down.